I came across Richard Groshals very late in his life. There wasn't much doctors could do for him. If there was, he wouldn't listen to them. That wasn't his fault, really. He couldn't hear much. He'd read someplace cotton buds weren't healthy for cleaning out wax from your ears. He couldn't keep up with the rates he was producing anyway. Buds just got lost up in there. Every few weeks they'd pop out with a sneeze in clumps, points sticking out in all directions like massage balls. I met him in a park. We introduced ourselves by the goose pond. He was breaking off digits from his hand and tossing them into the water. His fingers silently collapsed under my grip as we shook hands. The imprint of my closed palm left on his withered, buttery stump. He laughed and snapped off the false hand to reveal it was, in fact, real all along. He jovially said his favourite scene of Toy Story was the Mrs. Nesbit bit. He told me about his Etsy shop back in 2015. He'd do the typical, he'd sell candles. John Lewis were interested for a while, but really it's kettles, isn't it? It's kettles. Wax kettles. Wax kettles were a good greetings card idea, but in reality yielded poor sales. He gave up that dream and rented out a room at a primary school and gave sculpting lessons instead. There's a beautiful, cyclical self-fulfillment in sculpting busts of yourself out of yourself. Pick up for the class was slow, many didn't come back, but left their artwork on the school desks. Their heads would shine eerily in the moonlight, all not looking quite at you. As sun rose, they'd take turns to melt and snap off onto the floor. The caretaker eventually quit and uh, they had to pull up the carpet. He told me it soon spread to his skin. On a horrible summer's day, he would sweat a lot, but it was manageable. In the evenings, it hardened on the surface, encasing him like a tomb. Ironically, he had to go back to carrying around cotton buds to constantly twizzle new air holes in his nostrils. That kept happening over June and July, but in August he accidentally poked a hole right through, popped out the top of his nose. The elderly blamed youth culture again and tutted over their scones. Back in the park, he remoulded his fingers and slipped off walking a few feet, then leaning round behind to pick them up. As he got smaller in the distance, I felt empathy for Waxman. To not belong in a world that you used to fit right into. To suddenly feel like an outsider, made of what we all throw into steel buang bins. I reached out to him emotionally, and realised he hadn't walked off at all, he was just melting. His head knocked off onto the ground at my feet, but we're British and he apologised. 